Hey guys, you're watching Jay's Two Cents, and if there's one thing I've learned about all the messages I've gotten over the past couple of weeks, is that many of you are getting ready to take on your very first computer build. A lot of you are taking on this endeavor for your very first time, which is why this episode of A Little Bite of Tech is all about applying thermal paste. First of all, you're gonna to have to make sure that you have appropriate thermal grease. Right here, I'm just using some cheap thermal take for the sake of the video here, but I do recommend a Arctic Silver 5 or AS5 uh, or any sort of uh, silver compound because it conducts heat very, very well. There's three major techniques when it comes to applying thermal paste. The first one I'm gonna show you here is the P method. And what you wanna do is you want to put just enough thermal paste in the center about the size of a P. Uh, try and get it as round as possible and what's going to happen here is as you place the heat sink onto the motherboard it's going to evenly disperse or displace the thermal compound on the CPU because it's most important to make sure that you can get a nice even application of thermal grease uh, onto the CPU. And one thing I want to point out before we take off this heat sink here uh, and see how well that thermal paste spread out over the heat spreader, this technique does not make a difference if you're using Intel or AMD, or even if you're putting thermal paste on some graphics cards, heat sinks, or some water blocks. All of the uh, fundamentals here when it comes to spreading out the thermal compound is the same regardless of the application. So let's go ahead and take off the heat sink here and see how well the P method spread out over the CPU. And as you can see right there, uh, it's pretty adhesive. It's got some pretty good adhesive effect. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go ahead and call that one a blooper. It took the, the CPU right out of the socket with it. Okay, we got the heat sink off, and as you can see here, uh, this is one of the reasons why I'm not a fan of the P method. If you take a look at the edges here, you can see that you do not have complete coverage of the heat sink on the CPU. So this would have actually led to an overheating situation in the CPU because this much of it would not have been cooled. This would have probably not caused any damage, but you would have noticed higher than desirable temperatures. Okay, we've cleaned off the grease, and the next method we're gonna go ahead and do here is the line method. Uh, basically, just like it sounds, you take the thermal paste, and you put a nice even line of thermal compound across the top of the heat sink or the heat spreader. This stuff isn't the greatest quality as you can see here, it kind of globbed out at the end. But if you use high quality thermal paste, uh, that's not gonna really be an issue. Okay, we've got, our, we've got our heat sink on here. It's nice and tight. That's what she said. Go ahead and take this off now and see how well the line method or method number two uh, spread out here on the heatsink. And once again, it took the CPU right out with it. This is, uh... all right, so there's the line method right there. Um, you can see half of it's on the heatsink, half of it's on the processor. But once again, as you can see here, we do not have complete coverage on the CPU heat spreader. Okay, and last but not least, we're gonna go ahead and do the X method. It's just like the line method, only you're going to make an X across the top of the heat sink. What the idea of the X is, is that it's supposed to help it get into the edges or the corners uh, a little bit more. Okay, as you can see here, we've got better coverage on the heat spreader. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and chalk this one up to being uh, crap thermal paste. Uh, from thermal take. I don't recommend that stuff at all But I definitely do recommend the the X method because it does get better coverage So there you have it a nice quick and easy video from Jay's two cents about the proper way of installing thermal paste on your CPU or GPU or whatever you are doing Get it now I can already hear some of you guys jumping right out of my screen saying, hey, wait a minute here. On your water cooling video, you did a whole different method with the credit card or the business card and you spread it all out over the heat sink. I went ahead and decided not to show that method because there's a couple of reasons why uh, some people would say you shouldn't do that. One, it can introduce air pockets into the thermal paste when it gets kind of churned up. And if air gets caught in between there, then it causes overheating issues. I've been doing it for years, I'm very comfortable with it, but I don't want to mislead anybody into doing something that could potentially damaged their computer and two some of you guys got really angry about that and practically chastised me so I don't want to go through that again 
Anyway, I'm going to get on out of here. You've been watching Jay's Two Cents, and this has been A Little Bite of Tech, bringing you short little YouTube videos, giving you guys the power to build and customize your own PCs. Get out of here and go build something. Do it. Do it now!